Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. And before we go to our first guest, we'll go back to Boschetti. Mike, can you say our first guest name yet? Uh, Jonathan? Yep. Casalius. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, we're going to keep you out there. We'll check back in 10 minutes. All right, stay out there till you know his name. <laughs> can I Google it? <laughs> no, just stay out there. Let's turn off his mic in the camera. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Our first guest is a great, great player uh, for Tampa Bay, a uh, linebacker, and his name is Jonathan Casillas. Right? Go. Very simple. Go. Very yeah. simple. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a Jersey kid, after my own heart here, Jersey City guy, went to high school in New Brunswick. Welcome to the show, John. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. So uh, you're a defensive guy. The best defense in the league uh, is there. What are your thoughts on this game? Are you rooting for the defense? Uh, does that is that fond to your heart? Defense, in other words, like you root for the defensive team. I have a good friend that plays for Seattle. Okay, uh, he also went to Wisconsin. His name is O'Brien Schofield. So yeah, I, I would like to see him win. You know, um, Peyton Manning has a great legacy, um, and also Russell Wilson. I didn't go to school with him, but he's also a, a right. Badger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so and and, and and Marigos as well. So there's three Badgers. You know, playing mm -hmm. for for them, and there's one Badger, Monty Ball, playing for oh, for Denver. Yeah, so right. I'm going with the Badger field team in in in, uh, in Seattle. What about your teammate uh, now, Revis? You think he's better than Richard Sherman? What's uh What's the deal there? You know what? During the year, um, when when people were trying to compare him to Sherman, I was like, I can't see it because I see Revis every day, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. I mean, mm -hmm. this dude is unbelievable. You know? Yeah, but they're, they're but they're different players, yeah. right? Like Revis has. It, and I don't play with him, so I, I can't say this from your perspective, but he just seems so strong, like abnormally mutant strong for a cornerback. And he uses that to his advantage where he can lock you down strength-wise. And he's he's at a disadvantage when you're talking size right. mm -hmm. against Richard Sherman. I mean, he's got the length. Uh, but, man, Revis, no one dares even – test him so it's kind of hard to they don't even go out decisions right. but same with richard sherman at yep. this point that's what started yep. to happen People to lawrence going. taylor lawrence taylor and uh like that um super bowl against the bills they just put three guys on taylor yeah. and he was a non-entity but it freed up the other guys to have a great game um so you said what do you it's feel tough like to, makes him so special it's probably Revis. tough to compare them yeah i like i like what you said about revis because i when i first got to the bucks you know everybody knows about revis right you know, about, around the league but this is my first year here and um, in Tampa, and that was his first year too. So, you know, everybody knows about him. He was on the in he was injured, you know. So we couldn't really see him in camp, which was mm -hmm. which was tough. Um, but the first game, just the New York game, I'm just looking at him <laughs> playing against Holmes, and Holmes is really struggling out there to get open. Absolutely, and he put his hands on you, like you said, he's very strong. And I've seen him throw receivers like pick them up and throw them. He threw Harry Douglas <laughs> really? across the field one time because <laughs> he tried to block him. Yeah, he's strong. But you, but you know what I noticed uh, about a Revis and about a Sherman, um, you know, watching Sherman in the playoffs and going against them and just kind of seeing film on them and uh, watching Seattle's defense out there. Because when you watch enough film on, uh, on other offenses, you're going to see defensive players. That's how you kind of develop some respect yeah. about other players that you don't really see on a regular day basis, mm -hmm. like, a, like a Sherman for myself. And what I noticed that, especially these two guys, and we're, we're going to call them the top two corners in the league. Right. They use what they have to their advantage. Richard mm -hmm. Sherman's a long, lanky guy. He put his hands on you. And the Seattle's defense, they, they require that. They require their hands to they yeah. put on receivers. That's why a lot of quarterbacks struggle against them. You know, uh, Kaepernick can have some success in mobile quarterbacks because they can, when, when the receiver get their hands put on them, sometimes they go from the first read to no read. Off like just like that, yeah. and it doesn't even matter how deep the route is or anything, that creates a problem for uh, offenses against Seattle, and they have their pass rush as well. Yeah. So I think this is going to be interesting this game, you know? Yeah. Because the, the quarterback is not a mobile receivers. quarterback. What do you mean when you say they require you putting your hands on? What does that mean? Their defense is a bump and run defense. Oh, they okay. play a lot of man to man, and if you watch it, when the Seattle snaps, oh, excuse me, when the offense snaps the ball, all the Seattle the DBs are up in the line on the line of scrimmage, putting their hands on receivers. And everybody does that, but not every play, like right. Seattle does. Yeah. And that creates a problem. Peyton Manning's a, a rhythmic quarterback, just like the best pocket quarterbacks are. They're rhythmic quarterbacks. And when your rhythm gets thrown off by your first, second, third read, and you can't create outside the pocket, mm -hmm. and you have those guys Meanwhile, yeah, you got Avril coming off the edge, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, pre creates a problem. It's yeah, a lot to think tough. about. When you look, when you look at uh, Drew Brees, when you look at what the Saints did when they went up there, that was 
precisely the problem. Drew Brees had no one to throw to because by the time anyone got any separation, you had D Lyman breathing down yep. your neck. And I agree, that is going to be a serious issue. Now, if Denver is able to run the football, which they like may they were, be. Like they were in the AFC Championship game, they yeah. ran like crazy when well, they needed to. I, yeah, that's that's the big question. I think if the, the two big questions for me in this game, and tell me what you think, uh, can Denver run the football because they will be getting good looks? You know, because they're they're spreading things out and throwing the ball so right. much. You know, they'll be getting some six man boxes. Can they take advantage of that? I think yes, they can. And the question on the other side of the ball: Can Seattle run their bread and butter, which is an inside zone, which puts if you're running that, which puts your your guard and your center double teaming mm -hmm. the nose tackle, mm -hmm. Terrence That's Knight. If they can move Terrence Knighton, Seattle. Which is tough. I That's the I thing. I seen him play I, last week. Exactly. <laughs> he was unstoppable last wow. week, but he was not double teamed. If they can double team and move combo block as they as they go up to the, the linebacker, if they can move Terrence Knighton, I think that Seattle wins this game. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I agree with you partially. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, number one, I think you're right on with Denver. I think Denver has to have success. They have to run the ball. and Because I, I think Seattle's going to be able to get to Peyton Manning, unlike like they did mm -hmm. last week. I mean, you, you can't just let Peyton Manning just sit back there. He's going to carve you up. Just like yeah. the, best of the best of the best. You know, yeah. Tom Brady, he was pressured all week, and he struggled. You know, and even Drew Brees, he was pressured, and he, was, and he struggled. Right. And that's what happens. These great quarterbacks, you put pressure on them, they become average at best. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's just the truth. And you put them in the element and conditions. They're not used to that. Drew Brees is a dome guy, you know. And Peyton Manning, I mean, he's a different monster, you know, I, I believe, because he doesn't really have too many problems. Like, people say Drew Brees have problems playing in the, in the cold, but they don't really say that about Peyton, mm -hmm. you know? So, I think... Not anymore. And you I, never I, hear that about yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that, that's just part of his greatness, you know? Right. Uh, he doesn't really have too many, you know, people don't have too many bad things to say about him besides mm -hmm. his playoff record. Yeah. Which is like, it's the playoffs. Well, listen, They're I got to tell They're playing number one seeds that, yeah. that end up going to win championships. Tom yeah. Brady. And There's he, no didn't pressure have, on he him. did not have a team supporting exactly. him all the time. Exactly. In, in exactly. Indy. There's pressure on his legacy right now, man, because if he if his final Super Bowl record is one and two, that's a big deal. I mean, listen, but he's going to be, he's going to have all these records. He's going to go right in the Hall of Fame. He's going to be known. He's going to have whatever job in broadcasting he wants. He's a businessman. He's going to have all the money in the world. So all they have to really challenge them as far as their sanity is concerned and their happiness when they go over their career is that final record. And the fact is his brother's going to be 2-0 and oh and he's 1-2. and two. It's, it's, I mean, as an athlete, as a, as a real true competitor, uh, don't you think that's going to get to him? Oh, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a personal thing. Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, we can say all we want. Right. But when Archie and Eli and Peyton, they all get together and they start right. talking. Yeah. Eli got two rings. You yeah. know what I would do? <laughs> if I was Peyton, just start goofing on Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> How was it today at the insurance office, Cooper? <laughs> yeah, I'm one and two in the Super Bowl. And what are you? Are you playing for the company softball team this year? <laughs> just rag on a nine NFL brother. <laughs> That's probably the, di probably the dynamic. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, how many years have you been in the league now? Uh, this is uh, concluding my five, so I'm going on year six. Wow. So, uh, congratulations, man. Not a lot of people can say that. How is your how is your health? Like you had the knee this year. What are you are you recovered from that? Uh, I had a meniscus. Um, I'm I'm in no rush to get back because mm -hmm. it's such a short injury, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I'm taking everything slow. I've been running um, in the pool. I haven't done land mm -hmm. yet because, like I said, there's no rush. This is like a, basically like a six six week to two month turnaround, and I'm kind of on the fringe of that. Right. You know, but there's no rush for me to get back. So what I'm doing is doing Contour all my Sally. rehab. Is no. Todd your Todd Torricelli? Yeah, your yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm just doing all my rehab and getting all the intrinsic muscles fired, get my quad back up so I get my strength, and then I'll hit the ground. Because like I said, I don't have to do anything until April 7th if yeah. I'm back with Tampa Bay. Are right you, now, are you single right now? Rest of the yes, joints. I am. You're single. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. it. I mean, uh, you can do that too. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful. <laughs> got to be real careful. Now, we were just discussing this. I mean, you know, stay away from the Hooters chicks. I mean, for if you can do it for one night, that's fine. Don't go marrying these boys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Honestly, because forget about it. You'll lose everything. Do you stay down there in Tampa, or do you come back here in the off season? How do you work that? Well, I have a daughter. She lives in Garfield. She's two and a half. She lives in Garfield, New Jersey. So whenever I'm here, or whenever the off season happens, I try to spend as much time 
home, which I call Clifton, New Jersey. Oh, is, there you go. I, I just stay there because my daughter's so close. But my home is Jersey City and New Brunswick, you know. So, mm. But I live in Clifton, and uh, I live in Tampa as well. So, I mean, I'm only here for the Super Bowl. Best believe I might not even watch the game here. I might go back and watch <laughs> yeah. it in the warmth of 70 degrees. Yeah, no, why not? <laughs> right. Why not, man? Listen, if you have any help with your family, you let me know. I'm right up to Route 3. Route 3 in Clifton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. okay. TikTok diner. Yeah. I'm there all the time. So, you know. I'm right behind it off the... Off by Rutch Hubbard. I was about to we drop a whole head of just now. What's your phone number? <laughs> you need my social as well. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. Uh, well, that's good. So, uh, now, what's it like down there uh, in Tampa Bay? Give us the, the yeah, local the, thing, Shiano and everything. Yeah, everything's yeah. changing now, right? Have you met the new guy? I have. I have met Levy. I mean, Levy's a great guy, you know, I've, and I've only heard great things about yeah. him. And, um, you know, me being a young a young player in this league and, and but I am a veteran, I've had a chance to Chicago being on the fringe of wanting me there as a free agent a couple of years ago. Right. And Lovey was a guy in a system that he ran that I would fit in. Mm -hmm. So it just happens that he's coming here now. And I mean great. our defense is great, man. We we got a lot of yeah. got a lot of balls on defense, man. Levante Davis is a good friend of mine and he was a Pro Bowl snug, but he made all pro, you yeah. know, great linebacker. I mean I, I my big brother, you know, he got my big homie. Is Jonathan Vilma? You know, I've came under the the, the um, you know his ropes and with the New Orleans Saints, and I think he's as good as him, if not better, at him in year two. Wow! You know, you know he's we, a tremendous player. You know, we got to do. We got to take a break real quick. We want to keep you here, uh, but uh, you can hang another segment, right? Yeah, of course. And uh, honestly, you know, to me, it's hard to one quick piece of advice. It's hard for me as a man to take uh, uh, orders from a guy, a man named Lovey. But if he could, if he could lengthen it to Levante, like your friend, <laughs> tell Lovey to just add an ANTI. Levante, I could take orders from. Lovey's trouble. We'll talk about that real quick before a commercial. Uh, we'll go to Mike Boschetti. Mike, can you pronounce his name yet? Jonathan Casillas. Uh, someone yes. told him that. You know, whoever John. told him that might be fired. He said that. Nobody said anything. Odd. He said no. He said that. Wait. He doesn't remember stuff. Jonathan Casillas. <laughs> All right. Come back in, Mike. <laughs> Might have a lawsuit from a four-hour bronchial attack. Frostbite. Yeah, come back in. Okay. All right, jerk off. Back after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.